Welcome to the first ever tutorial video of Code from Scratch. I am so excited to be starting this series with you guys. Today we are going to talk about a concept that is extremely important, not just for beginners but also for advanced level coders because this is a concept based on which a lot of even Google interview questions are asked and almost all good companies ask questions based on this concept. It is extremely, extremely important and it is also very easy to understand. So I thought this would be a very good topic to get started with. Now I know when you hear binary search, it seems like this is a topic that a lot of people might already be knowing. But what we are going to do in this series is that we are going to start from basics. We are going to solve some easy level questions, medium level questions and then hard level questions as well. So we are going to set up base right. We are going to understand why binary search is required, where it is required and how to identify that okay this medium level or hard level question is based on binary search. So we are going to get our basics very, very right. And based on what I have heard, a lot of you struggle with consistency. Trust me, I do too. And that is why I committed to release one video every single day. I'm doing this with my job. So I think you can go through one video every day, right? This will help you crack any DSA interview that you face. So let's do this together. You support me, I support you. And without wasting any time, let's get started with binary research. As you can see, I have taken a set of numbers. Now I've taken random numbers so that people don't get confused between the indices of the array and the numbers themselves. But otherwise, if I take the example 0, 1, 2, 3 itself, then people might think, are we dealing with indices? So that is why I've taken random numbers. But one thing that you can notice is that I have stored the numbers in ascending order. They are sorted. Now they could be in descending order also, but for now we are taking an ascending order to understand the concept properly, right? So what we have to do is we have to see that we are given a set of numbers and we have to check whether a particular number 33 exists in this set of numbers or not. Okay. Now let's think in a very simple way. How would we do that? One way to go ahead is that we start from the first number and we check. Is this number 33? No. Then we check. Is this number 33? No. Is this number 33? No. We go ahead. We keep checking one by one by one. And then we come here, okay, this number is 33, we have found the number, right? This is one way to go about it. Now, what would be the time complexity of doing this? In the worst case, the number that we would be finding is the last number itself. Suppose we were finding 80, okay? Or suppose 33 was present over here. So in worst case, we will have to go through all the N elements. Suppose there are N elements in our array. So in worst case, we'll have to go through all the N elements. So our time complexity is order of N. This is one way to see whether an element exists in the array or not. Okay. This method of linearly going through all the elements and searching whether a particular elements exist or not is called linear search because we are going through linearly, right? What we are going to do is we are going to try to optimize this and we are going to use binary search. So we will now understand what is binary search and how it is going to be implemented. Okay. To understand binary search, let's take the problem like this. Suppose we knew that a number 20 exists at the index 6. Now we have to see whether number 33 exists in this set of arrays or not. Okay, we know that number 20 is over here. Now this 33 will obviously be on the right side. It will be on the second half only. Why? Because this set of numbers are sorted. So all the numbers that are less than 20 are on the left side. All the numbers that are greater than 20 are on this side, right? So if 33 exists, it will be on this side for sure. So what we did over here is we took one particular number and we made sure that we don't have to even check one portion of the array. We don't even have to traverse or check this portion of the array. We are sure that the number 33 will exist on this side only. Again, what we can do from this, we take say any other number 40. Now we have taken 40. Now we know that, okay, the number 33 will be on the left side. So now we don't have to check the numbers 42 and 80. Now we go through these numbers and see whether 33 exists or not. So basically in every traversal, what we are going to do is we are going to make sure that we are canceling out a portion of the array and we don't have to traverse all the numbers now. So this is what we do in binary search. We take the middle most element. So basically what in this case, there are 13 elements, 0 to 12 indexes, right? So 13 elements. So we take the middle element here. This is the middle element. And now we check one half of the array. Now we could be checking first half or second half. But in every iteration, we are going to make sure in the next iteration, we have to go through just half of the array. That since we are dividing the arrays into half half, that is why it is called binary search. To understand it properly, let's go through the example. Suppose we were searching 40 in our case, okay? 
Now we checked what is there in the middle. So we know that at index 6, 20 is present. We are searching for 40. Okay, now we don't know where 40 is. So we know that it cannot be in the first half because 20 is the middle element. So it is definitely in the second half. So now we search in this portion of the array. Okay, from 24 to 80. Now we again take the middle element of these six elements. Now there are two middle elements, but let's take any one of them. Suppose we take 33. Now from this 33 also, we have to check 40 is higher number. Okay. So now we don't have to check whether the element exists here or not. We just have to check that the element exists here or not. Right. See to explain in simple terms, you have set of numbers given to you. They are given in particular order, say ascending order. Okay. You check the middle element and you see whether the element that you have to find, say x element, whether it is bigger than this or smaller than this. If it is bigger than this, then you are sure it is on this side. It cannot be on this side. So you don't have to search this at all. So you check this part. Now in this part also you divide into half. You check what is there in the middle part. Now is your x greater than or smaller than this? Then if x is smaller than this, then you know you don't have to check this at all. So you come over here. Again, you can divide this into half. Now, like this, what will happen by dividing into half, 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 in the end, you will check just one particular element. Now, if that particular element was x, then you have found the number. If it was not x, you have not found the number, right? One, one possible thing could have been that the first middle element itself was x. Then we don't have to traverse anyway, right? We don't have to go on the left side or on the right side. In the first iteration itself, we found the number. That is possible. But in the worst case, you will have to keep going either on the left side or on the right side until you reach just one number and you have to compare that number to x, right? To explain it again, so if you have an array, it could have been possible that the middle element itself is the x. That is one possibility. The other possibility is that it exists on the left side of the x. The other possibility is that it exists on the right side of x. These are the only three possibilities, right? Now, if this is x, you will return the answer from there itself that yeah, it exists and you can tell the index also that it is at the middle index. Otherwise, what you will do, you will compare x to this middle element and you will either check on the left side or on the right side. Because the numbers are sorted, it will be on one of the two directions only. Then you have to check only half portion. See, the most important point over here is that the elements should be sorted. This you should remember because the entire concept is based on this. A lot of students make this mistake that the elements are not sorted and they are applying binary search. See, if you have to look for a number x and if you are at the middle element or if you are at any element, you cannot be sure whether the x will exist on this side or this side if it is not sorted. It could be at any random place, right? So you have to be sure that the elements are sorted to be to apply binary search. If they are not sorted, you can still sort them and apply binary search. but if you're applying binary search, the elements should be sorted and you should remember that. Another point that is discussed in all DSA interviews, what is the time complexity? Now in binary search, what we are doing, we are dividing the array into half all the time, right? Either we go this half or this half, again we divide into half. So one array we divide into half, again into half, again into half, right? So the time complexity is log n. Now this is very, very important point. You have to remember this. I hope you have understood the concept and tomorrow we are going to write the code of this. I am going to show up. So you also please show up and for the reminder, press the bell icon with the subscribe button. It will mean a lot to me if you can show up and be consistent with me. Thank you so much. Bye. See you.